thank you, uh, Dr. Kwang. So you can, you can, you guys can hear me. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Dave Wang. I'm working in Queens Public Library. Uh, in the meantime, I also teaching in St. John's University. I teaching graduate courses about U.S.-China relation, uh, United States and East Asia. This is the, uh, the, my research about the uh, United States uh, 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 and Confucianism, how Confucianism had an impact on the United States history. And uh, so this is a very uh, uh, particular time. So I want to share some personal thoughts on cultural exchanges. But I hope that my lecture will help uh, to reduce tensions between China and the United States, particularly now when ge geopolitics has heightened the rivalry between two superpowers. I hope this culture will foster mutual understanding between us. Uh, so in order to know today, we we'll to know the past. So this is how I've presented the past. Uh, how that present how Confucius had input in the United States uh, history. What do we better understand each other and our cultures that triggers respect? Once you learn more and know each other better, you have more respect for each other. Especially now, as you, you guys in China have a strained relationship, Carl is our resources to transcend this tension. There is nothing better than having understanding the influence of Confucianism on the United States. So, I've briefly what I'm going to talk, give it an outline. First of all, I'll talk about Confucian ideas on government. Then I talk about Confucianism spread to Europe. And then I talk Confucianism in the United States. First, I talk about Confucianism and the founders and the founding fathers in the colonial era. And I talk about Confucianism in the making of a US democracy. So we are a democracy, but US democracy is particularly different from other democracies. So why is it different comes from? Uh, why did Confucianism have such a great influence on the United States? So I'm, I'm going to talk about it. Confucianism, uh, the influence, it, it comes nowhere. It's not coming nowhere. Where does it, where, where does it happen? So you know, United States is a Western tradition, European tradition. All of the founders were educated and brought up in European tradition. In such a cultural milieu, how could, could Confucius get in, get influence on those founders? Uh, and first one, I talk about China became the foundation stones in the edifice of new ideas in, in Europe. Then I talk about drawing positive elements from Chinese civilization had already been a process of historical development. It's a, it, the historical history was there. It's, it's not something come from, no, from nowhere. So I'm, and then finally I'll talk about this tradition was also spread to North America. Uh, have any questions, concerns, observations? If you, if you have any uh, questions and concerns, and just raise your hands and talk to me, okay? And uh, first, I'll introduce Confucius ideas, ideas on government, uh, how to govern your people. Confucius was a Chinese philosopher and educator. Confucianism created by him played a main role in shaping traditional Chinese civilization since the Han Dynasty. So before the Han Dynasty, Confucianism is just one th school of thinking in China. 
In the Han Dynasty, a scholar told the emperor, our country, we need like main ideas, main thinkings. So they talk about Confucianism as our uh, <coughs> main thinking. And then Amro adopted uh, the scholar official's recommendation that tried to set up Confucianism as a main ideology, main thinking. Uh, so Confucius taught, so we know what, what, what Confucius is thinking, the moral cultivation of people is the most important thing for a nation. The moral cultivation should start from the top leader of a nation. That's his idea. For Confucius, a ruler's good virtue was his primary uh, prerequisite for leadership. Politically, he maintained between ruler and people. The latter was more precious and more important. Government officials are to be responsive to the needs of the people they govern. Confucius valued education, work ethics, and leaders, moral examples for the public. Okay, so I have some idea. Uh, you don't have to rush yourself to, to, to make it, uh, take notes. Uh, the, the PowerPoint uh, is available, and I think uh, <laughs> Professor Kwan, you can get it from her. I will leave, leave, I'll leave my uh, sl slides, PowerPoint here, and after class, you, you want to look, uh, reveal what we, we covered, you can get a copy from uh, Professor Kwong, right? That's why here, I just want you thinking. Think about it, why this happens. Just like uh, well, at the beginning of the class, I, I asked the question, why this happens? In a prominently, European tradition, how Confucianism came in and played an important role in US democracy, right? Think about the idea, and then you can get, get more out of my lecture. But you, you rush yourself to take notes, you'll be uh, missing part sometimes. Uh, most importantly, Confucius teaches the uh, democratic idea that sovereign rule comes from the people, the rule from the people. Confucius compares the ruler to a boat and the people to the water. He says, water can carry the boat. In the meantime, water can upset the boat. Uh, uh, in other words, the position of the ruler depends on the people. Without people, the leaders can do nothing. In a country, in a nation, what is the most important is the people. Without, that makes sense, right? Without people, just without nation. Uh, the people are the most important element. Government exists for the benefit of the governed. The Duke of Shu is one Chinese official, asked about the government. Confucius said, government, good government obtains when those who are near are made happy and those who are far are attracted. This is during Confucius era, uh, China, China was divided into different small countries, different, like Europe, all the different nations. And uh, all of the nations try to attract more people because the more people, the stronger the nation. And then, that's why if you, you have, if you have a good government, people will come to you. Yeah. So Mencius reiterated in, uh, directly, they talked directly. The people are the most important element. The sovereign last important. That, that's the idea of Confucius. Mencius is, is a uh, very important Confucius uh, scholar. And uh, in Confucius uh, school, she's, he's only next to Confucius. So now we talk about Confucius spread to Europe because that's very important. At that time, in the colonial era, 
there was no direct connection between North America and China. The direct connection was built until 1783. The first commercial sh ship from New York to Canton in, 80, in 1783. After then, the, the direct connection between China and the United States. Before then, all of the influences come from Europe. That's why we have, we have, we have to know the rules. We have to know the uh, Europe. We have to know how Confucianism uh, spread to Europe. Since the introduction of Confucianism into the West by the Jesuits in the 17th century, the European intellectuals have agreed upon with his philosophy of ethics, <coughs> and government responsibility, and social conduct of uh, several points. So, uh, Confucianism had a very influential in the age of uh, enlightenment. The European thinkers, thinkers at that time was fighting against the, uh, uh, the, the uh, church, right? So the church is corruption and dominates the, the, uh, the, the, the people's lives. That's not right. So, and then the Confucianism came at this time. And they, they picked up Confucianism, they said, use Confucianism as an instrument, as a tool to fight against the church in Europe. There are uh, uh, many uh, famous uh, thinkers, they just said, oh, we should adopt the Confucius idea. Uh, before Confucius idea, people didn't realize People without religion could be how good virtue. You know? So the two representatives was uh, Voltaire and Frank uh, Quincy. Those two did uh, uh, Voltaire uh, uh, said Confucius uh, created a perfect moral science. It's perfect. And now Confucianism came to the United States. And uh, so, we talk about Confucianism and the founders in the colonial era. The founding fathers were excite excited about Confucianism ideas. Uh, so it's like James Madison, you know, he's the uh, father of the uh, American Constitution and the Bill of Rights. He hung on Confucius portrait in his house. And Benjamin, uh, the Thomas Paine, also of common sense. So, you know, uh, John Adams once said that American Revolution waged by uh, Washington's sword and uh, Thomas Paine's pen. That, that's why you can see Thomas Paine's common sense is so important. Tom, uh, Thomas Paine uh, considered the Chinese sage to be in the same category as Jesus and uh, uh, Socrates. So the, the, the Thomas Paine was like a, uh, discolored after the founding of the United States because one, one of the reasons was that he said that. So he compared Confucius with Jesus because in the religious People just oh no you cannot do that you cannot compare the uh, Confucius with uh, uh, with our God that's why you get a discolored. Uh, Benjamin Franklin we know he is Benjamin Franklin right he is the uh, creator of the American spirit. He 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 said Confucius moral philosophy was valuable to the human being in general. It's not it's not only good for people in the East and people in the West, it's for whole human being, for all the people. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, in his personal scratch book, uh, placed a poem about an ideal Chinese princess that recommended by Confucius. So uh, in Thomas Jefferson's era, uh, the intellectuals had a habit 
to, to make a clippings from uh, books, newspapers, where, where they got, uh, they cut it down, put it in a book, called Scratch Book. And as a reference, they just uh, uh, read uh, uh, those uh, uh, references. So John Adams uh, and Benjamin Rush, all of those founders think, regard Confucius highly in the efforts to uh, start a new nation. So he hit the uh, James Madison's house. Inside the house, he had a um, Confucius portrait together with, with the other uh, famous fingers in the white tradition, put them together. Here's Tom Paine. Tom Paine said, Confucius, one of the world's great uh, moral teachers, good moral teachers. Uh, see, uh, I quote uh, what he said in, uh, he said in uh, one of his uh, well-known uh, works. As a book of our morals, there are several parts of the New Testament that are good, but they are no other than what had been preached in the East world several hundred years before Christ was born. That's what I can say. Confucius, the Chinese philosopher who lived 500 years before the time of Christ says, acknowledge the benefits by the turn of the benefits, but never revenge injuries, they quoted Confucius. <coughs> or here, here is the uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, the, in 1737, in his well circulated uh, weekly newspaper called the uh, Pennsylvania Gazette. So, Franklin, this paper was very well circulated in, in the colonies. And because of the paper, Franklin made money, Franklin could retire at the age 40 and then donate himself to public uh, affairs. So in third, 1737, Franklin published some works of Confucius. This is 40 years before the founding of the United States. He published Confucius works. And here is Jefferson. This is Jefferson's scratch book. This is the page Jefferson put the, the uh, poem selected by Confucius. Confucius uh, uh, pub had a book uh, uh, published. It's a old book, uh, uh, Chinese called uh, The Book of Poetry. Uh, it's one of the Confucius classics. In that uh, poetry, it uh, tells a story about a uh, uh, Chinese princess how he, he used his energy and time to steal the people, and people remember him. But it, because at that time, all of the founders, they concerned about uh, the, uh, uh, the heritage. They were about how they evaluated me, the posterity, how, how, how to look at me. And at this time, Jefferson thought, okay, we go, I got like the, these princes recommended by Confucius, remembered, by people, and people's heart. <coughs> so uh, we, we, we can see the red. Uh, so his example has impressed uh, benevolence in every uh, breast. Does he in manners, good, goodly great, refine the people of his state, the lead to lenity, that Jefferson's uh, really uh, took uh, this process recommended by Confucius as his example. And uh, this is a commentary. This, at that time, there was no book. It's a bamboo. Confucius wrote the commentary on the, on the, on the, on the book. Uh, called Shi Jing, got Chinese called Shi Jing, uh, uh, the book for, of poetry. 
uh, if you Google the uh, Confucius Classics, this is, this uh, Shi Jing will come out uh, automatically. Uh, also, I should uh, let you know, at the same time, uh, Jefferson regarded the uh, uh, princess recommended by Confucius as his role model. He cut the Bibles. He made a Bible, his own personal Bible. And uh, in the Bible, he cut all the miracles from the book. And leave the, uh, like a moral book. Use all the morals, and uh, so now you can tell this is not this is not a coincidence. This happened at the same time. On the one hand, he uh, to learn the morals from the Chinese uh, princes recommended by Confucius. In the meantime, he cut on the Bible, make the Bible a moral book, a moral book. So he cut find, uh, cut away his virtue through the Bible. So. Adams, John Adams, right? John Adams is the uh, is great thinker of American political system. And uh, he, uh, he tried to study the Confucius classics. He, he even said, I, I even want to study Chinese language in order to get the real meaning of Confucius. He's, he read word for word in the original of Confucius, which I carefully compared with the Latin translation, right? That's what he said. That's, yeah. In 1808, uh, he confessed to his fellow founders of the United States that how you name the world I, I may now explain by long silence. Uh, for three or four months, I have been in company with such great personages as Moses, Moses and the Confucius was included, right? So Confucius studied Confucius works. So now we talk about uh, Confucius, uh, Confucianism in the making of US democracy. Uh, that's the main story I'm gonna talk about it. So how come Confucianism uh, influenced our U.S. democratic system, democracy. After the victory of the American Revolution, the founders took Confucian ideas and used them to frame new political institutions. The founders' effort to pursue some of the positive Confucius moral, social, and political approaches were part of a broader ideological shift. The effort contributed to the emergence of a distinct American character with, with a new sense for values. You know, we know America is a democracy, right? However, we have to realize American democracy is different for, from other democracy in the world, right? And uh, so, the United States, guided by the founding principle set forth in its constitu constitution, has often been hailed as an example of modern democracy. However, the American system is not a pure democracy. Right? So what was the pure democracy means? Means, uh, I give you an example. Suppose in the election, and uh, in pure democracy, Majority rule. Like, a, like a we, the two persons had a competition uh, in the election. I got one more vote. What happens? I won. Right? It's, however, it's not the case here in the United States of America. Remember, Hillary Clinton won two million more votes, popular votes, right? Two million votes, but he didn't get in the White House. Trump uh, got two million less, the popular votes. And then 
he entered the White, White House as, as president. Why this happens? Because we have a particular system called ele Electoral College. The Electoral College decided who will be president of the United States of America. That's why I can see the difference from pure democracies and the democracy in the, in, the, in the United States of America. So uh, after the uh, victory, American founding fathers realized that it's easier to, to topple down the old system. It's more difficult to set up a new government. That, that, that's a very, it's, 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 it's a uh, difficult time. This is the, the, the words, the quotations from John Adams. He, he said, I quote, it is much easier to put down a government. In such a conjuncture of affairs, as well we have seen, than to build up as such a season as a president. It's very hard to build a president. So let's uh, Webster. Webster made a statement. He said Confucius, Confucianism as one of the most influential forces in the development of the United States Constitution. However, as so far in our history textbooks, you, could, you can't find anything about Confucianism. Everything is the separate power, right? Separate, uh, everything is like, like this, about European thinking, class, uh, Greek classic, Roman traditions. They never talk about Confucianism, right? But, but Rob, Rob, uh, uh, Webster <coughs> made a statement a long time ago, he said. So I already know Webster, right? We use Webster as a dictionary, right? <laughs> now I do where you know when I came to the United States uh, 30 years ago, anywhere I can find a Webster dictionary. Go to grocery stores, you want a Web Webster dictionary right there. <laughs> so the, uh, so Constitu constitutional convention that's a very important event, right? That uh, put out the, the first uh, written constitution in human history. That's the American uh, Constitutional Convention. It's in 1787, last three months from May to September, three months. Uh, so, uh, Franklin, we can talk about Franklin's role in the uh, uh, in writing of American Constitution. So we we usually talk about uh, James Madison. He say he say he's, he's the father of Constitution. Now we, uh, I'll tell you about Benjamin Franklin's role in writing Constitution. This this picture shows Franklin returned from Paris to North America, and then and then did Congress let him come back? Uh, because now we need your wisdom to help us to build a, a new nation. So after nearly a decade in France, Franklin returned to Philadelphia after resigning from the position of commissioner on May 2nd, 1785. Franklin was recalled to America by Congress, quickly resuming uh, uh, his political efforts in America upon his return in 1785. Franklin became a delegate to the 1787 uh, Constitutional Convention, Franklin Convention. So uh, Franklin served as an unofficial host for the delegates because Franklin it was the oldest politician. He's 81 years old. Jim, uh, Alexander Hamilton, only 30 years old. James Madison, 35. And George Washington, 55. Uh, Franklin served as an unofficial house for delegates. 
He played the main role in, in the convention. James Madison makes the following observation or quote. The nomination came with a particular grace from Penn as Dr. Franklin alone could have been thought as a competitor that between Washington, George Washington, the who will be the host of the convention, someone said only two persons. Why is Benjamin Franklin, the other why is George Washington. And Franklin nominated George Washington as a host for the convention. So uh, this, this is very important, the, the letter. This letter is uh, written uh, by Benjamin Franklin to George Whitefield. Uh, if uh, we have learned uh, from American history about a guy named called George Whitefield, right? He's a very well-known minister in the Great Awakening period. He came to the colonies to teach about Christian identity. And his friend, uh, his friend of Benjamin Franklin, uh, Benjamin Franklin told him, I, I regard Confucius as my example. With, in this letter, he formulated a, a theory called social progress. Now, I, I've got to uh, go further detail what I talk about. The, the, here's the, uh, the painting by a uh, well-known Chinese painter. And I, I sent the painter to uh, uh, Professor Mark Skousen. He is the eighth generation of Benjamin Franklin. He said, oh, this is a great picture. This really looks like Benjamin Franklin. This, this picture is uh, very important. He sees the opportunity, the, the moment of Benjamin Franklin put forward his theory. Now, I've got a quote uh, uh, what he says. In that. He said, I'm glad to hear that you will have frequent opportunities of pre preaching among the great. If you can gain them to a good a exemplary life, wonderful changes will follow in the manners of the lower ranks. Uh, for example, which is on this principle, Confucius, the famous Eastern reformer, proceeded. When he saw his country sunk in vice and wickedness of all kinds, triumphant, he applied himself first to the grandees and having, uh, by his doctrine, won them to the cause of virtue. The commons, the commons followed in multitudes. The mold has a wonderful influence on mankind. And there are new numbers that perhaps fear less the being in hell than out of the fashion. This is the, you know, the red, they put the word red, it's called the East. How the East societies make progress. And then the blue, talking about the West. Our more Western reformer, reformations began with the ignorant mob. And when numbers of them were gained, interest and party wills drew in the wise and the great. And the intellectuals just followed the masses. Were, were both masters, which uh, the Chinese masters and the white masters, both masters can be used Reformations are like to be more speedy, or that some measure could be found to make them lasting. He that shall discover that. Well, in my opinion, deserves more 10,000 times than the invention, than the inventor of the longitude. So here is this very important theory here. So usually, People think about the Eastern or Western, the, the, the parallel. The Eastern ideas, Western ideas, so, so the progress, and the Eastern way and the Western way. 
However, here, far on inside, we have to combine the eastern way with the western way, make a new way. That's the best way. You say not eastern, not west, but the combination, the best from east and the west, making social progress uh, quicker. That's his theory. Uh, Franklin theory has uh, three points. Three points. First one, Franklin believed leaders should be the cause of virtue. You want the leaders, you got to be got good virtue. Otherwise, you, you cannot be leaders. Second, Franklin recognized that the modes of social progress were different between the East and the West. The former was characterized by good govern government. The good government lead, set the rules, lead, lead the people. And the latter, the West, was by the government mobs. The message, the public, promote social progress. And uh, finally, combining the Western mode of social progress with the Eastern governing traditions was essential to political progress. So, so now we can see Franklin's theory, how to make social progress. And in the Constitutional Convention, Franklin applied his theory in, form, in forming the American political system. So I make the, I make the diagram for us to easier to understand. Here we see the, the Eastern way, Confucius uh, meritocracy. And, uh, oh, I don't, anybody know what is a meritocracy? The e meritocracy is basically a system that yeah, very, Yeah, that's right. You know, you know, United States is a, nowadays uh, United States is a meritocracy, right? Elite rule. Basically, we can say that uh, people, capable people rule, elite people rule. All of the leaders from elite, they graduated from elite schools, right? You see where they graduated from. It's a Harvard or Yale, right? Curly, Obama graduated from Harvard. Uh, Curly Dunn graduated from Yale. W. Bush graduated from Yale. Right? All of the people from the elite, so the elite people be the leaders. So in, in uh, Chinese way in Asia, the Confederate meritocracy, the wise and great get room and cause virtue, have, have, have virtue. In the West, uh, led by Ignard Mao, this is Franklin's words, now, uh, Ignard uh, mobs and commons. So we got two way now, Eastern and Western. And for Franklin, neither uh, is good. So we got a combination. Combination two ways. Find a way to use the two methods at the same time. See, that, that's the Franklin's theory talking about. So now we, we see the application of his theory. The first one, Benjamin Franklin's theory, combining Confucian's governing ideal with the wise social tradition, but combined. And then we got to check and balance. How combine Eastern with the white tradition, you got to check the balance. What it means? It means uh, the popular, the public need to be checked. We cannot, we cannot let unchecking. So, and the, and the, the leaders also need to be checked. We need to check it. Well, how do we check the uh, public? We go to electoral college. So we, we don't take uh, popular votes as a final result, right? Because the, the founders, they didn't have trust in the public. 
They said, public, uh, maybe not uh, adequated enough, or not smart enough, maybe make a wrong decision. That's why we need to check it. We got an electoral college. How to check the leaders? We got separation of the power, right? That's very important. Now, in some countries, there's no such a check the balance. Like what happens? Like, like in, in China today, there's no separation of power. All the power comes to one person. Well, if one person is wrong, the whole country was wrong. This is not the case here in the United States of America. If you're wrong, we can check you. We can check you. That, that's, that's the totally new things in, in the human history, right? Brand new things come from it. Where it come from? Now you can, can tell the Confucianism influence on those framers of the Constitution. Uh, so Franklin's theory would have guide the founders in creating stable government. Based on Franklin's theory and drawing from enlightenment principles, the founders crafted new political mechanisms, such as the electoral college and separation of power among three branches of a government. Uh, so Franklin played a central role in the uh, uh, Convention Center. Uh, so uh, they made him central to the Constitution that saved the nation. As the oldest member of Constitutional Convention, Franklin toiled hard to promote his political theory. Judging from the uh, renovation of the Convention on the structure of the new government, we can perceive Franklin's significant role uh, on the formation of particular political system. So this system come out, uh, it's the fruit of Benjamin Franklin's theory. So you should the electoral college to have popular vote at the check. After independence, the founders wanted the automatic governing of the colonies. However, how to govern the new nation? They faced the dilemma. On the one hand, their own experience and lessons they learned from history made them distrust a strong central government. Those founders, they don't like central government. That's you know, because they learn from their own personal experience. They're no good. On the other hand, they also realized that a government was necessary for the new nation because the Articles of Confederation can do nothing. The all states on its own, the federal government, no money, cannot, uh, uh, cannot, cannot, cannot collect taxes from different states. So in the one time, they don't like central government, the other time, they don't like uh, no government. So that, that's the way they have to make new uh, mechanism, make new institutions, electoral college in place. In 1787, two things forever changed the face of American politics. First, a group of national leaders drafted the U.S. Constitution. And secondly, they decided that the average citizen wasn't uh, erudite, erudite enough, not smart enough, to elect a president without the bridge of a system known as the Electoral College. It is not part, they said we cannot totally trust uh, popular votes. That's why we see the result. Uh, uh, so the will give you an example about popular vote. Is vote popular vote uh, not guaranteed the case to the White, to the, uh, White House, right? Something wrong with my So we don't like uh, Hillary Clinton got eighty percent of popular votes. Trump only got about uh, 47, 46 percent. Right? So differences is Hillary Clinton got two million more votes than than uh, Trump. 
right? However, she lost. Also, I think there was not a, a occasion. Uh, George Bush and Gore, right? Gore, Gore, I will got also got more popular votes. At that time, I think it's maybe around a million more votes than uh, W. Bush. And W. Bush got more electoral votes. That's that, you know, I think maybe three or four times in the United States history happened like this. So Franklin was behind the plan of electoral college. So did these four guys, uh, four founders, did, did uh, framers of constitution, did talk, this is the guy, uh, uh, James Wilson. James Wilson was a speaker of Benjamin Franklin. All of the ideas was, was, were told to the delegates through Wilson's mouth. Wilson, uh, uh, the, the, really, uh, the idea was the Electoral College was Wilson uh, told the delegates. And this was frankly behind it. Because uh, Wilson and uh, Franklin had a very close relationship. She, uh, after the current convention, he uh, he became the professor of uh, uh, Philadelphia College, uh, the College of Philadelphia. This is the uh, University of Pennsylvania, founded by Benjamin Franklin, and he was he was recruited by the uh, by the university. Uh, so uh, in nineteen oh six. So now, if you, if you uh, want to uh, Philadelphia, visit uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin Museum with Benjamin Franklin School Yard, you can see uh, James, uh, James Wilson just lay behind, beside uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin. It was done by 1906 by uh, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. He's, he put the two, and the two friends laying, lay, to, lay together in the grill, yeah. So, the, uh, so that we can tell, if you want to make, want to talk about here, if you go to the documentation about the, the uh, who put the idea out of the Electoral College, or this is from James Wilson. But James Wilson was a representative of Benjamin Franklin. Actually, the real idea was, was based on Franklin's theory. That's what, that's the point that I, I want to make. So, the, so let's talk about electoral uh, electoral college. Evidently, the electoral college was made based on Franklin's theory to combine the East with the West. He knew it very well that it was the first time to combine the West with the East in human being history. He told uh, to a French, said, "We are making experiments." Uh, Franklin warned that those who still retain to the Western history tradition, the introduction of the new cultural elements were due to the nature, natural and unavoidable effect of their change of situation, the new situation. At this time, we searched the classics, searched the history, Roman Republic, we found nothing we can use. We have to use foreign culture, we got to use Confucius' idea to build a new system. Uh, he blamed those who were against the change, not only for returning into Egypt, but also for stoning the deliverers. He said, you, you, can, you, you make a change, we, we, we got uh, fighting against you. We have to keep the uh, wise tradition. So Franklin said, no, we got a, this new situation. The, everything from wise tradition didn't, uh, didn't, work, uh, didn't work out. So now, the, the, the whole, now it's the Electoral College. Uh, the whole country had 538 electoral votes, right? 
I don't want got 270. He won the election. Right? How many? Oh, Florida, Florida got 29. Wow, Florida's that strong, huh? <laughs> he's a, he got a same votes as New York. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that. California got a 55. Oh, Texas got a 38. And then California, Texas, then Flo uh, Florida, and New York. Mm. You know why? New York maybe lose uh, uh, electoral votes because more people from New York come down to Florida. No, <laughs> that's why you got to lose your votes. So Fl Florida got more power now. John Adams said, I, what's government for? Government just for the happiness of the people. So it's Confucius said, what you said about government? Government uh, should go of happiness through virtue. John Adams agreed these ideas. Uh, John Adams as a uh, very important uh, uh, political thinker for the American political system. That's why I, 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 just, I, told, I told about uh, what I think about it. Uh, John Adams had written to James Warren at the start of 1787, 1787 before the, the opening of con uh, Constitutional Convention. Uh, to warn him that people position could not be entrusted entirely without examination. The populace not cannot be trusted hundred percent. So you got the examination, check about the public. But the one thing I know, a man must be sensible of the errors of the people. The people could have error, right? So you know, uh, democracy could go wrong. One. Our study example was that uh, some dictatorship was elected by the, by the people, right? They go to control, control the power. But one thing I know, a uh, man must be sensible to the errors of the people. So people could be wrong. And upon his guard against them, a must run the risk of their displeasure sometimes. Or he will never do them again any good in the long run. By 1787, many of framers prefer to be realistic in relying upon institutional checks rather than individual virtue as the soundest basis for maintaining liberty. That's why you need an electoral college. You cannot trust people's virtue. Oh, he's a good people. We cannot trust him. We're going to make some law, some institutions to restrict uh, people only do good things. You know, just like uh, James, James Madison said, we, we put good people in, uh, good people in, in leading position, we have to make him to be good all the time. You know why? Because people could be bad. He's a good person, one became the uh, leaders, when he got the enjoyment of his power, he turned to buy bad person, right? So that's why we gotta make some institution to maintain his good person. Since democracy was one step away from mob rule. You cannot say democracy is it's like a, a solved out issue. Democracy could be dangerous. You know, it's, it's like uh, in World War II, democracy <laughs> like Hitler, right? Uh, Adolf Hitler was elected. Could be. Uh, James Madison also agreed upon Adam and claimed, pure, I quote, pure democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention, have ever been found incompatible with personal security all the rights of a property and have in general been as short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. They said pure democracy won't last long. 
But the framers also feared that too much democracy was a dangerous thing. To some of them, democracy was one step away from mob rule. They also didn't believe that most people had the education or intelligence to make a wise choice. So Jefferson declared cultural independence. So Jefferson said, we, we independent economically and politically, but also we need independent uh, culturally. He said cultural independence from Great Britain on more than one occasion. And the poems he gathered from American newspapers reveal his uh, preference for poets and rebels against the English monarchy. So we, when we go to uh, Jeff, Jefferson's uh, scratch book, we find out the poetry was collected. And then we read the poetry, you know what in his mind. <coughs> so the founders couldn't get any valuable advice from the Western classics. You know, because it's a, all of them just read carefully about uh, uh, the Western classics from uh, Cicero, Cato, Brutus. And I quote uh, what Jefferson told Adams. I confess, then I can neither see what uh, Cicero, Cato, Brutus united and uncontrolled controlled, could have devised to lead the people into good government. No, so I don't get, get it wrong, just found it suddenly found out the conversion idea and then you will use it. Before they did that, they had made the references from uh, Western classics, go to Greeks, Romans, and classics, and they read them. They try to get some, uh, get some valuable ideas from the classics. So when Jefferson said, I couldn't get nothing for the good government. Now how this enigma can be solved, now how further shown, why it has been the fate of that delightful country that were to have known to this day through a course of a five and twenty hundred years. The history of which we possess one single day of free and rational government. So now you know why they go to Confucius. They try to get ideas first from the Western classics. Then they get ideas from Confucius. So they, they didn't they didn't go to converse directly. They read the Western classics first. Then they thought, oh, that's not enough. We well, have to get some new things. And then they go to classics, Confucius classics. As Con Constitutional Convention frankly explained to the representatives, why is new nation did need Confucius governing wisdom? They tell so it had to be convincing because in this uh, uh, Western tradition, Confucius was uh, not uh, known widely by, by the people uh, in New Nation. So because at the time, if you, if you mentioned Confucius, people will, people will look you like you're from uh, outer space. Where are you from? Why mention this idea? We have our own classics. You gotta remember, remember, all of the founders were educated by those Greek Roman tradition. They read those class, the Western classics. So in this kind of cultural milieu, you introduce conversion idea, you have to be very convincing. Very con so uh, Franklin told the representatives, we indeed seem to fill our own one or political wisdoms. Since we have been running all about in search, of, in search of it, we have gone back to ancient history for models of government and examined the different form 
of those republics, which having been urgently formed with the seeds of their own dissolution, now no longer exist, not gone. Those, 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 those uh, political system are uh, gone. And we have weird modern states of all around Europe, but find none of the constitutions suitable to our circumstances. Now we know why the foreign ideas, conversion ideas, come into place. It, it, it did, once again, it did mean that the founders suddenly found conversion ideas there. They did thorough research. All of the materials available to them, first the Western classics, and they read the history books. The, those, those framers were well known scholars that were smart. They, could, they know what they're doing. They, 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 they decided we got to check everything available. That's why they found out that Confucianism ideas could be used with how combine the Eastern with the Western uh, ideas. Franklin's theory became the general guideline for the founders to create a stable political government. Right? It's very stable. So now, if you, uh, you check at the, um, the electoral college, in the next America, I'm, I'm not, I don't know exactly the numbers, but certainly several hundred times people tried to overthrow electoral college. You check it on the computer. So people say, oh, we don't need this electoral college. We just learn from the other country, pure democracy. Totally de decided by popular votes. Like I, like I said earlier, I, vote, I got one more vote than you. You got a 100 vote, I got 101, I beat you up. I, I went into position. But this is not the case in the United States of America. So now we're talking uh, Franklin's understanding uh, of Confucian ideas was beyond his era. His understanding was echoed by other key founders. Franklin's theory became the general guideline for the founders to create a stable political government. Following the guidelines, assisting with the political think thinkers ideas in European Enlightenment, the founders designed a new political system. And such as electoral college and separation of the powers among the three branches of the government, as a result, the meritocratic, the meritocratic uh, tradition was formed. That's very important. So meritoc meritocratic. In the United States, uh, it's a meritocratic, right? Everything, you got to pass the examination. Became the became exam. You got to go to school. You got to perform good economically. But no, academically, you got to be good. Otherwise, you cannot be go to uh, elite schools, go to college. Like the government employees, you got to pass the examination. Like, uh, so give you an example, suppose you want to get a job from post office and there are federal jobs, what do you do first? You got to study guide, right? You got to take the test. You got to pass it. Then you can be hired by post office. This idea is a meritocracy. Yeah, I, 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 passed, I passed the test, I got a job. You failed in the test, you only got a job. That's a meritocracy, according to the, your personal ability. Your wisdom, your intelligence, you study hard, you know, you know the test. Right? The later American generations follow this tradition. The Confucius meritocracy was assimilated into American political system. And it became an, uh, oh, oh this, 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 this word was wrong. So it used to be unalienable. I did, I'm sorry for that, yeah. Uh, this this word because this word this is supposed to be unalignable. <laughs> I I, I misspelled the words. Yeah, it's unalignable. 
uh, element of American political culture. Now, uh, the United States democracy and meritocracy. The founders regarded Franklin's theory highly and put it into practice. Their efforts allowed Confucianism principle into American democracy. So uh, we have to give you uh, what happens here. So the East, right? East here from the East uh, uh, sort of up, from up to the bottom. Uh, Confucian progress was realized by ideal, see, the leaders, that's Confucian. And the Western, the reversed, from bottom to up. So you think about the American Revolution was started by Tea Party, right? The mob people dumped the tea into the Boston Harbor and then uh, started the revolution. Here's the Franklin company in place. They got combined. We cannot follow the Western, we cannot follow the Eastern, but we combine. Combine the Western and the Eastern. And, and the, the check the leaders, you separate them from power. Check the leaders, right? So in the, in the next America, no dictatorship, right? Like in places, in the other countries, I don't want to say specific country, but you know, there's no separation for power. Every power into one person. What happens in that nation, right? When the person gets something wrong, the whole country will get it wrong. And the, the, that's why we got separation of power. That, that's what happens in the United States of America, and, and how they check the Check the public, electoral college. Both of check it, yeah, right. That that that's the idea come from. So now I will wrap up. But Benjamin Franklin, uh, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson were the staunchest advocate of Confucian principle of political democ uh, meritocracy. Together, these founding fathers labored to introduce Confucian governing principle to the new nation. As part of a collective effort, Franklin formulated the theory of combining Confucian's uh, governing principles with the Western mode of a social progress. And Adams focused on Confucian ideals regarding the purpose of government, and Jefferson espoused the importance of virtue leaders, to, like a concert, to, to the uh, founders, just like a, oh, like a team, introduce Confucian ideas into the American political uh, system. So, um, Benjamin Franklin closing speech at the Con uh, Constitutional Convention, and I just like a quote, in this sentiment, sir, I agree to this Constitution. With all its faults, if they are such, because I think a general government necessary for us. And there is no form of government but a, what may be a blessing to the people. If we administered, administrated, and I believe further that this is likely to be well administered for a course of years and can only end in despotism as other formers as, as the forms have done before it. When the people shall become so corrupted as to need despotic uh, uh, government, uh, being incapable of any other, the Franklin talked about it. So I, I think uh, history and contemporary social development uh, are constantly demonstrating the significance of Benjamin Franklin's theory. Americans founders incorporated some positive elements from other civilizations. Uh, in today's world, no matter you, your background, your education and career, an understanding of how past societies have drawn strengths from other culture is a key to human progress in the future. I think uh, uh, and, uh, up to here, I have a lot of things to cover, but I, I will stop here uh, because of time. And, uh, Do you have any idea as to why, like, like 
Confucianism or like the fact that like the founding fathers weren't influenced by Confucianism isn't talked about like in schools in general or I so like because like in school you, you need to talk loud. So in school what what I was taught was that like they're like the founding fathers were influenced by like Voltaire and like all these European philosophers, but I had no idea that they were influenced by Confucianism. Oh these are European thinkers? Oh that that's a that's a very uh, a lot, a lot of research has been done. Mm -hmm. So you just type, you just type, put the keywords in the, in the search engine, and they go, Voltaire and Confucius, you a whole bunch of stuff come out. It's easily to find. And now there are a lot of uh, uh, academic works published about uh, how the European thinkers in the age of uh, enlightenment were, were impact, impacted uh, by uh, uh, Confucianism. Because at that, that time, they really used Confucianism as a weapon to fight against the corruption of the church. They said, oh, the church is corrupted, we need something good. Hey, so they said, oh, without church, the Chinese got a good virtue. And are you talking about the, the Christian identity, the church uh, have, make, you, uh, like a, uh, make you a good person, good, mor good morals? However, look what happened in Confucius. Confucianism is a good virtue right there, without you. Also, it's a 500 years early than you. So that's, that, that's you do a lot of, uh, lot of research done now. You, know, you can, it's, it's a very good topic uh, to, to look into. If you run a paper, it's a lot of materials and a lot of uh, uh, documentation is there, yeah. Thank you for your question, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh -huh. today still share similar Confucian ideas and if that transcends the current economic tensions between the two countries? That's, that's, a, that's a very good idea. That's why I talk about the culture, not the resources between the two nations. Now we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, just look on about the ideology, right? The culture is more important than, than, than that ideology. So, because people talk about the, the dictatorship, or autocratic uh, government, and then uh, Chinese democracy, right? Mm -hmm. So now we, we know that the Chinese democracy, uh, U.S. democracy system borrowed some ideas from Confucianism, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have the basis on those kind of uh, uh, cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. Even though Americans' democracy mainly ideas is from Western tradition, right? Okay. Got a Roman and Greece. However, in, in the formation of the democracy, democratic system, the founders also ob absorbed some ideas from Confucianism, from culturally. Mm -hmm. we, we have like a, those like a common ground. So we, that's why you, 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 you're absolutely right. Confucius has really good ideas for current society, mm -hmm. both for China and for the United States, mm -hmm. right? For, for, yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah.